on a consideration to approve an amendment to the agreement with all green. Mr. Chair. Update on our contract. I have a motion by Commissioner Romeo Second. to approve the amendment. Second, Commission Triplett. Any discussion? Uh, I have some things to say. So I went through the contract and I just I had some issues with um, different points of the contract. So I put it in writing because I would like to make it part of the minutes. I'll give you a copy of it when I get through reading it. Um, my objections to the amendment to the solo waste transportation agreement with all green services and Atlantic Waste Services. Paragraph one, the original solo waste transportation agreement was not an exclusive agreement. Paragraph two, this paragraph is false in that the original solid waste transportation agreement does not have the terms of five annually renewable terms. The original solid waste transportation agreement had an automatic renewal clause for the years which states that the agreement shall renew automatically for five successive calendar years which were otherwise known as renewal terms unless the county takes action to terminate the contract by giving at least 30 days prior notice this clause allows for termination of this contract but also the renewal of the contract if no action was taken the word annually as defined by Miriam Webster is covering the period of a year the word year, as defined, is being a cycle in the Gregorian calendar of 365 to 60, 366 days divided into 12 months. The word renewable, as defined, is capable of being renewed, and the word renewed, as defined, is to begin again. The collection and disposal agreement was the contract that contained the annual renew renewable terms. There was no clause in that contract for early termination, nor for the contract to continue without any action taken by the board. One could present the, a case that based on the definitions of the words annually renewable, that the contract should have been voted on in June 2020 in order for it to be renewed. No such vote took place. I have no issue with paragraph three, four, or five. Paragraph six, this paragraph reflects that the contract, let me read this for you want. That paragraph states, all green shall provide the necessary loader and labor to efficiently load all acceptable solid waste disposed of in the transfer station but the county will continue to manage the scales, weighing of inbound, outbound trucks, billing, collection of all transfer stations, maintain and repair the facility and property as necessary. <coughs> this paragraph reflects that this contract is not for financial gain to the county. It shows that the county will continue to incur costs for the maintenance, operations, and repairs of the facility despite the increased use of the transfer station by all green services and Atlantic Way services and their desire to import in trash that originates outside of the county. Paragraph seven, it references the rates, okay? There's a transportation rate of $18. In March, I addressed that the hauling rate was high. We were currently paying $27.50 per ton, which is $5.50 a load on a 20 ton truck. Technically, we were paying more than that because the trucks were unloaded or underloaded. I recall the chairman stated that the hauling rate was not high because the trucking was expensive and he knew this because the, he runs trucks on his own farm. Now, only three months later, All Green has presented to the board a decreased hauling rate of $18 a ton. Though it is better than $27.50, it is still too high for a county that has its own trailers and could be hauling the trash at an even lower rate than $18 a ton. Additionally, there is still, the, in the original um, solid waste transfer transportation agreement, a fuel surcharge schedule. This schedule allows for an additional fee to be attached to the total cost of the load if fuel prices rise above the base rate of 275. Per the U.S. Energy Information Administration website, the current rate for diesel per gallon as of July the 12th is $3.21. There's a loading fee in this paragraph of $6.50. During, during the June meeting, I recall a statement that All Green would be performing the loading operations at no charge. The contract reflects a 650 rate per ton. Scriven County generates roughly 11,000 tons of trash per year, which will result in a cost of $71,500 for loading. The county has the ability to load the trash at a true zero cost by using inmate labor with proper supervision. There is a tipping fee of $24.50 in this paragraph. In the June meeting, per the minutes approved today, Commissioner Triplett stated All Green had the advantage in tipping costs due to more volume 
so all greens rate is lower. Prior to the trash being hauled to Superior Landfill in Savannah, the county was hauling to Augusta Regional Landfill at a rate of $24.95. With the exception of the Augusta Regional Landfill, the other surrounding landfills participate in competitive bidding. I currently reached out to one and was given a tipping rate of $18 a ton. Therefore, no portion of this paragraph offers to the county any financial benefit. Paragraph eight. It is in reference to segregating and cleaning and separating out construction and demolition material. Um, it's my understanding that this material has the ability to be recycled and, and reused for local use. Paragraph nine. It's a, it, it reference county shall allow all green to dispose of municipal solid waste from the neighboring Jenkins County and Scrim County transfer station. My issue with this paragraph is the use of the transfer station to combine Scriven and Jenkins County's trash will not produce any substantial amount of revenue. Per the June meeting, Jenkins County produces roughly 4,800 tons of trash per year. We will charge all green services Atlantic Waste $51 per ton for that trash and then immediately turn around and pay to All Green, Atlantic Waste, $49 per ton for that same trash. $2 per ton on 4,800 tons is only $9,600 a year. That amount will not cover any damages to the loading dock or the scales caused by the additional use. The county residents will be left to cover the cost, yet they are not the producers of that increased trash. Paragraph 10 says, that there is a new rates established will be subject to the 4% disposal cost increase at the landfill at the beginning of each calendar year. This paragraph reflects that the contract is again, not for a financial gain to the county. At no other time in any public meeting has a 4% disposal cost increase been discussed. This fee is new and not found in any of the other two, either of the two contracts that the county has with All Green and Atlantic Waste Services. This increase will result in a tipping fee of approximately $27.56 by the year 2024. Furthermore, this will stop the county from soliciting bids from the surrounding landfills and will ensure that we are no longer able to get the best rate for the citizens. I take no issue with paragraph 11 or 12. The other issues that are not present in this contract is there's no speak of insurance liability to the county for allowing a private entity or a non-employees to operate equipment on county-owned uh, real estate. There's no compensation for the use of the real property known as the loaning dock at the transfer station. Other county-owned locations, such as the rec department and ag center, require fees to be paid in order for the public to use them. Rules regarding no long-term or short-term so storage of anything anywhere on the ground. There's no defined areas that are allowed there's no rule, there's no speak of having defined areas that are allowed for use and others that are specifically off limits. What I mean is this transfer station is directly attached to an undeveloped piece of land that was once under consideration for a local landfill by the county, for the county. So you are granting access to an individual that this county just bought on a landfill you're granting them access to a piece of property that has already been approved by the EPD for a landfill. There are no defined rules for the incoming trash. There are no rules stopping this company from routing trash from other counties through the Jenkins County collection site to the Scriven County transfer station. There's no defined rules that at no time will inmate, we need to have defined rules that at no time the inmate labor will be used to assist all green services with any labor needs for the loading dock. Um, and there's no defined rules on hours of operation with no access to loading dock after hours. Um, having defined access or having defined rules on, on, our, on access to the um, unit will ensure that the additional, un that there is no additional unaccounted for trash that is being brought into the transfer station after hours which would result in improper billing on the trash, because if we don't know it's coming in, we're not gonna bill for it if it's being brought in after hours. And that seems to be one of the issues that has kind of led up to all of this. When I look back in 2017, when I look back at the, the rates in 2017, you had a revenue, I'm sorry, for 2018, your revenue was $36,000. The tipping revenue was $36,000. 
In 19, the tipping revenue was $44,000. The tipping rate, re, the tipping revenue in 20 was $61,000, and in 21 it was $211,000. Even though we were at a 35-ton rate with the city of Savannah, we should have been billing more. There should have been more revenue coming in because we should have been billing more. And the records indicate that, like in 2019, there was no billing between September and March. The city picks up trash all the time every week they were dumping in our transfer station every week they, we should have bills going out every week so to, to not have a process to oversee the trash coming in and out of the transfer station and not having defined rules to make sure that we are accounting for all the trash that's coming in so then we can be billing properly for all the trash coming in because that trash we will have to pay to go out I mean I find that very concerning that that's not in this contract so I respectfully We'll vote no on the amendment as the stipulations got in the contract are incomplete, inaccurate, and they're inconsistent with the oath of office I took when I was sworn in. Furthermore, if it's not the board's intent, if it's not the board's intent to set all green services and Atlantic Way services up for access to a landfill, I implore each commissioner to hold off on voting on this amendment, let's make revisions and additions, and to hold an open discussion with the citizens of this county before moving forward on it. Anything else? Not at this moment. Good. Any other discussion? Yeah, I think that that raised several good questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I know here in the past months we have voted on resolutions, code amendments, and in my opinion, we really haven't discussed them as a board, workshops. I think we're moving too fast, and we're not giving this complete thought as we should. Mm -hmm. So, Allison, I appreciate the good information. There was several stuff I didn't really understand about it or, or know about it, but I, 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 I'll find out. Uh, the 200 acres? I yes. wasn't aware of that. There's, a, there's two tracts of land back there. One is 130 and the other one is like 200 and something, but there are actually two, two sections of all of that area back there that has already been approved through the EPD for a landfill. So and, it's, and it's my understanding that the county was looking into developing it for a county landfill, but it was due to the cost of a liner that the county stopped. Now, that's, that's my understanding. You know, I don't have that in writing, um, but Mr. Wall has no problem with putting in a liner. Mm. I think we need to discuss this for a few minutes. I, my opinion too. I just feel it lacks other safeguards that our citizens are entitled to. All right. I think many of the things you mentioned are, are far outside the scope of this agreement. I agree. Well, it's the beginning of the scope of that agreement. Mm -hmm. the very, it's the beginning of the beginning. I can think of a million things that well, are outside yeah, the scope yeah, of, this, yeah. of this contract. I mean, but right. that doesn't mean those things are going to occur. That doesn't mean they're not there. So are you, in, are you suggesting that, that you should move forward on this Absolutely. and then come back and, and add to it? Why would you do that? I don't think it needs any additions or subtractions because the things that you mentioned are outside the scope of this agreement. We can't just assume that. Like what? thousand different things are going to happen because they're outside the scope of this agreement. Like what? Name one. Like, like, the, 200, like the 200 acres of, of, land, of land out there. That has nothing to do with this agreement. Nothing. Okay. So does access hours for making sure that we are accounting for the total trash coming in and it's being built properly. So because you, everyone understands that when it rolls across that scale, we bill for it. And that same trash, we have to pay to get rid of it. So if it's not accounted for when it goes across the scale, we've lost 51, let's just say one ton, we've lost $51, but then it's gonna cost us $49. So we're in the hole, $49. You like once, once it comes across that scale, it's ours. That's correct. But if no so one is in that scale, to write that ticket and issue that ticket because it's being brought in after hours, and we've had, 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 we've had,
we've had a small parts in the agreement, like operation hours and stuff. That's but we've had that discussion before too. And we you know have. historically we've had some problems with billing. Sure. And uh, I that's, think that's, that's what that's, we're doing. That's right. We're, we're getting it under control. I mean, uh, see, just yeah. like we're discussing just now, that's what we need to do at a workshop. I don't think we need to jump the gun and vote on this right away. Mike, we just had a workshop. Yeah, and this not this one. I mean, we can't we can't control out the aisles and all that. Who's gonna fucking? It's work? our transfer yeah, station, know, and we yeah. do control it. We are I'm responsible. I'm saying that you say well, after that. That's assuming that that's what happened. When the gates are closed. Yeah, the gates are closed. They have yeah. keys. Yeah, I mean. Well. I think the monitor that. Well, are, we taking, are we taking are we taking Jenkins County trash now? I don't know. Not yet. Well, I, I mean, this is an opportunity for us to to make our sanitation department a bit more efficient. I mean, I don't see where it's any. All the I, I realize what you're saying possibly could happen. I don't believe it's pretty far fetched, especially the landfill part. That's way out there. Like oh. I don't think that's any. I don't even think that's possible. Much less probable. And so it only takes four. So four who votes because so it's county owned. It, uh, I just okay. that's my opinion. So can can I ask one question? I mean, maybe to each commissioner, do you think we can do this cheaper if we were to take back over and do it ourselves? Well, I've already been given a rate of eighteen dollars a ton tipping. I mean, we we pay three hundred and twenty-four fifty now thousand dollars just to bring the trash to us from seventeen, eighteen sites. Three hundred and thirty-six thousand mm. dollars just to bring the trash to us. Now, does that number seem high? I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. Please. It cost us seven hundred before he did it for three hundred six. With what? We with, tried. With, with seventy something sites. So then, at, at, at the back end of that, we, we cut two or three jobs, reduced our sites. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, no. I, I answer your question. That. Just my opinion, though. No. I don't. I don't know you that know we that could we do it. We might do it cheaply, but I'm not sure we can be very effective at doing it. I would like to point if out we, if that we handle it all. Just I read the paper last week. We don't have enough yeah. trash in this county to fill a truck. That was on the paper. So well, I think that's a good no, thing. No, that's not true. We don't have enough traffic to fill a truck. To fill a truck. That's what was in the paper. That's why we need to take the other part of I mean, I think that's good. I would like to point out that. I don't think it's accurate. Well, somebody said. <laughs> I'd like to point out that the expenses for 18 was $1,089,000. $89, the expenses. For 2019 was 1 million 49,000 the expenses for 20 is 909,000 21 is 894,000 so granted they are slowly going down however if you if you look at it in comparison to the consolidation of the site is going from 7 to 20 and the loss of the jobs and you no longer are running trucks, you don't have the maintenance on the trailers, you don't have the, the diesel cost, you don't have those all of those additional costs anymore because you're, you have out, literally outsourced it. Your expenses are not declining at a rate in, you know, that's proper. It, it should have dropped substantially. When you outsource, and I had a conversation with a, with a certified accountant, and he and I looked at these numbers, and and we both agree that, you know, when you outsource something, you should see, you should see a substantial drop in your expenses, mm -hmm. and that's not what's happening. What has happened is you have seen an increase in your revenue, which means that someone in the county. Whether, I don't know if it was this office, that office, this board, whatever, was not billing. So if your if your if your revenue is here and your expenses are here and you outsource, technically your your expenses should go here, which gives you a greater profit margin. But what's happened is your expenses have stayed the same and your revenue is here. Okay, your profit margin has increased somewhat. But if you would do it like it should be done, do it in house. Then your rev and bill properly and collect properly. Your revenue should be here. Your expenses will be down here, and you have a larger profit margin. This is money that the county can make that can be spent 
for other things. These, this money is not tied directly to a service district or taxes. There's not strings attached to this money. So it would it could help buy a new fire truck. It could help fix the roads. It could because this is generated revenue. This is not a fee that is attached to a service district. This is not a tax. You know what I'm saying? Like this this is money that we're making as a business. And you're allowing this this revenue to be given to Sam Sullivan and Ben Wall to benefit them. And this board has a duty to benefit our people, not not those companies. We would like to say this, that you take it to a vote. I mean, there's so much nuance involved, and all this information is utterly incorrect. I mean, What's incorrect? This, go ahead. I agree. What's incorrect? What's incorrect? Some of your opinions I don't agree with, whether they're incorrect or not. But what's incorrect? Yeah. Mr. Commissioner Triplett. Sam, you interrupt, man. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. Well. Inflation. We look at inflation costs, cost of good inventory, cost of health, cost of fuel, diesel. Health insurance, 50% increase over two years. The collections went up fivefold. There's a one mil savings so far. We didn't go up on taxes. Why? We got a one mil savings out of that. It's a lot of consideration here. Yes, sir. Risk. Everybody that doesn't own stuff doesn't understand the risk. There's a monetary value to risk when you have people on the road running stuff. There's a lot of things here that we're avoiding. Lawsuits, risk. And we didn't really lay anybody off. I mean, that's kind no, of a false thing, too. We Sam Sullivan and Ben Wall offered everybody a job. The lawyer offered them a job. And also, the prisoner offered them a job. I mean, it's, the savings was substantial. Well, and if we want to get back into business, Mike, I'm not opposed to your idea. I just I just have an opinion that I don't think the government at this time can do it. I could be wrong. I'm, I will admit to that. However, it just costs a lot right now to buy a loader. It costs a lot to do all that stuff. So it's going to cost us a lot to get in to try it. Well, we already have to have a loader, thirteen thousand to fix it. But sure, sure. apparently, because it's going to be sitting in the rust, I guess that's not going to be fixed. I don't know. I, I don't know about that, but I just I think I don't years know. to enter a high. You know, I, I, I'm good. I, I'm, I just don't care. We can sit here and beat this drum all day. Right. I think it's all. Well, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor of the vote. What? So I think it's already decided what's going to happen. So. All right. In consideration to approve the amendment, all green, all in favor, all opposed, motion carries. Thank you. All right. Moving on consideration to award a bid for 2021 Elmead Road Projects. Where do you have a bid? Bring you one for the other two. Since you're up, I can send an order. Yeah. 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 No, they're different bids. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, you start opening, it look like it takes them. I All think right. those might be from the same company, Rosa, so oh. look at them because they're just for that one of them. One of them they dropped off, and one of them come by FedEx, but right. bid from Everett Dykes totals four hundred and sixty-two thousand seventy-three dollars and ninety-two cents for. 2021 Elmwood Project. 